So there are lots of types of aphasias. Um, I just sort of introduced uh, those three anatomical structures and, they're, and they have characteristic types of aphasia if you lesion those areas. But there are other types of aphasias. Here are six um, major types of aphasia. And you can easily figure out what type of aphasia it is by just testing those three things uh, when you're testing their language. That is their ability to comprehend or follow commands, their ability um, to articulate, and their ability to repeat things. And then here's a good reminder of where likely lesions would, would be if they have that particular type of aphasia. So I recommend you spend a little bit of time just looking at that. Uh, that's a, a good um, table to kind of memorize to help, help you differentiate those different types of aphasias. <clears throat> All right, uh, I added a bit more uh, definition to those aphasias here. Uh, to help you think a little bit more about that table I just showed you, but I'll let you study that uh, on your on your own. There's a few words that uh, you come across a lot when you're examining patients uh, that we probably should just uh, quickly define. And so I'm going to go through uh, those um, here. So apraxia. So apraxia is the inability to perform a skilled, learned, purposeful motor act, despite having an intact motor and sensory system. So you can have an apraxia of, of really any motor task, whether it's moving your fingers, talking, swallowing. You can have an apraxia of any of those uh, skills. There are a couple uh, specific types of apraxia. There's an idiomotor apraxia. That is the inability to carry out on verbal command an activity that can normally be performed spontaneously. There's a constructional apraxia, ideational apraxia. Um, so there are a few different um, types of it, but just remember that that really is referring to the problems with that fine motor skill. Alexia is the inability to comprehend written language. Agnosia, the inability to recognize perceived sensory information. And so we just went through all the sensory cortices. And so you can have an agnosia of any of those sens uh, sensations. So you can have a visual agnosia, for example. The, the inability to recognize visually presented objects, for example. And um, lastly, in this uh, section, I just threw in a, a few common syndromes because I they come up a lot and I kind of thought it would be uh, helpful for exams and things. So I threw in a couple of descriptions of a few uh, syndromes and I'll, I'll let you uh, study those uh, on your own as well. So I'm sure you've come across these before like Gerstmann syndrome, Anton syndrome, Kluver Busey syndrome. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.